Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Investing Untangled. Hope you're all doing well. On this channel, I post videos about stock market research and detailed business and stock analysis. And if this is something that is interesting to you, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and follow my content here. In this video today, I'll explain to you how to do a fundamental analysis and a detailed analysis of the balance sheet of a company and how to assess the financial situation of a company off of its balance sheet. So I generally use this website called q10k.com and the good thing with this is that you can actually pull out all these uh, financial documents from all these different years. So you can just click view here and that'll get you to the actual document. So in this case, we are looking at the balance sheet and I'll explain to you all the terms that exist here on this balance sheet and what they mean and how to analyze them. So starting with the assets, you look at current assets. And current assets are assets which can be converted to liquid cash within one year, meaning within 12 months, it can be readily available to the company as cash. So you can imagine if there is some debt and you know some, some emergency expense that the company has to take care of, that goes out of these current assets. And it generally includes cash and cash equivalents, which in Nike's case here is $8.6 billion dollars. There's always a comparison between the previous quarter so that you get a chance to compare what the financial situation of the company looks like compared to the last quarter. The next item here is short-term investments. And what that means is these are also investments that can be readily converted to cash within 12 months. In this case, it is generally government bonds or treasury bills, which can be very quickly converted to cash. The next item here is accounts receivable, which means the money that the company is expecting the company has already delivered the products and services and the customers are yet to pay so this is the money that is coming in that's why it is receivable because the company will receive it and here in nike's case it is 3.7 billion dollars the next item is inventories inventories are basically the products of the company so in nike's case it is shoes and all the other sportswear which has not been sold yet which is lying in its stores and you should always compare different quarters and different years to see what the inventory situation looks like because you don't want that the inventory just keeps building up that means the company is not able to sell its products and there is just a massive accumulation of all this inventory happening there which is not good for the company all right next up are some other current assets prepaid expenses etc so this can actually differ from company to company from sector to sector so this is just basically other current assets that can be readily converted again into cash and if the company wants you to know what exactly it is they will have that in the footnotes of the balance sheet so you can go to the annual report or to the quarterly report and read the footnotes and see what exactly that is if they have something like a star mark here and then that'll be under uh, the balance sheet all right to sum all these up that makes up the total current assets and for nike's case it is 23.6 billion dollars the sum of all these and this is a very important item here on the balance sheet this basically shows the liquidity of the company the higher the current assets the better off the company is okay moving down the list then there is property plant and equipment and what that means is whatever equipment the company uses to generate its products whatever manufacturing plants it has whatever property stores etc in case of nike it has that all comes in this so this is almost five billion dollars for nike here the next item here is operating lease right of use assets it's basically the leases that nike has where the property doesn't belong to nike as such but they have the right to use that as assets even though they are not real owners of those and this could be something where they do not actually have to pay any lease fee or any rent etc that comes here now moving down here it is intangible assets and this is also very important a lot of companies what they do is they inflate their assets by increasing their intangible assets and i've made a video previously about financial frauds that sometimes companies can do and how you can spot them and you should check that out i'm linking that in the description below if intangible assets for a company make up for a big proportion of the total assets that should set the alarms off 
in the case of nike it is pretty nominal so only 270 million out of 34 billion dollars which is kind of negligible intangible assets are basically things that you cannot put a price tag on it can be something like brand image of the company etc next up is goodwill and goodwill is also considered intangible asset it is basically if a company for example nike buys a smaller company for 100 million dollars and the actual worth of that company was only 90 million dollars but nike paid 100 million so it paid 10 million dollars extra that 10 million dollars of extra money that it paid will be registered as goodwill and this will come right here so you can imagine in this case this is not an actual asset so these 10 million dollars have already been paid and it cannot come back but due to accounting rules it is considered an asset here so again if there is a massive proportion of goodwill with respect to total assets of a company that should again be a red flag and finally here is the last line deferred income taxes and other assets which also get added up in the total assets it's 2.6 billion dollars for nike and all of this put together makes total assets of 34.8 billion dollars for nike as of november 2020 all right moving ahead looking at now the next half of the document so this is liabilities now and again similar to current assets there will be current liabilities and these are liabilities that are due that the company has to pay within 12 months so within one year and that includes current portion of the long-term debt and for nike here there is nothing which is good for them next up is notes payable which is another form of debt it's something like a promissory note that the company has agreed to pay and for nike's case it is 41 million dollars as of november 2020 that it had to pay as notes payable next up is accounts payable and this will be what the company owes to for example its employees the salaries that have to be paid out or if it has taken raw material to produce its products but it hasn't paid it off yet that also comes into accounts payable so that is something that nike will have to pay out to other companies next up here is current portion of operating lease liabilities so in nike's case it is basically leasing a lot of these stores and it has to pay liabilities it has to pay rent and all that money put together will come in this section here again these things differ from sector to sector and company to company nike is in the retail sector now if you compare a tech company which probably does not have a lot of stores so it might not even have this item on its balance sheet so it differs from company to company moving further it's accrued liabilities so these are other liabilities that the company in this case nike has not clearly mentioned what they are but they're putting all of them together and lumping them as accrued liabilities and last up here in current liabilities is income tax payable it is the income tax that nike owes to the government so to put all of these together that gives us total current liabilities which for nike was 8.8 .8 billion dollars and what this means is that this is the money that nike has to pay within one year within 12 months and what you should always look at is that the total current liabilities should always be much lower than total current assets so in nike's case 8.8 .8 billion dollars of total current liabilities and 23 billion dollars of total current assets so this means nike has enough money to cover for its current liabilities so it doesn't have to raise more debt it doesn't have to take loans or sell off some of its manufacturing plants etc to generate money it has enough cash to pay off its current liabilities of 8.87 billion dollars so make sure always current assets are much higher than current liabilities next up is long-term debt nike has a long-term debt of 9.4 billion dollars long-term debt means it is not due within one year within 12 months so it is on the balance sheet the company owes it but it doesn't have to pay it off immediately generally big companies have revolving lines of credit with multiple financing agencies so they can always raise more debt if they're expanding their business etc and that generally gets registered here as long-term debt and only the portion that is due in the next 12 months comes here as current portion of the long-term debt but for nike 
there is actually nothing for for this quarter operating lease liabilities are 2.89 billion dollars so again as i said it's basically the leases that nike has and it has to pay rent on those and this money is again not due within 12 months current portion of it is right here but this one stays on their balance sheet for a long-term situation then there is deferred income taxes and other liabilities it's basically the income taxes that have accrued and uh, the company has to pay them they do not have any redeemable preferred stock which is actually not so much important for balance sheet analysis but what is very important is shareholders equity and in this section retained earnings is also very important and what this means is out of net income if the company pays off dividend so after dividend what is the earnings actually left what is the money left over out of net income after the dividends have been paid off so that means that is the money that the company is retaining and this money will be allocated by the management to expand their business or to acquire other companies and for the next term return on this retained earnings will be calculated which will reflect in its return on equity and return on invested capital and if those two items are high that means the management is doing a good job at allocating these retained earnings and gaining more and more returns on these retained earnings and with all this this amounts to a total shareholders equity of 10 billion dollars and what total shareholders equity means it is actually total assets of 34.8 billion dollars minus total liabilities and in this case nike is not on his balance sheet showing what their total liabilities are but you can actually add all of them up here basically the current liabilities and also the long-term liabilities and that'll be the total liabilities so total assets minus total liabilities gives rise to shareholders equity so if you add shareholders equity back to total liabilities that'll make it exactly look like total assets which is 34.8 billion dollars and here it is total assets are also 34.8 billion dollars that's why it's called a balance sheet because both the parts of it then balance out i hope you got value out of this video and if it was informative for you please consider leaving a like and subscribe to this channel investing untangled i'll be posting more videos like this and also more detailed stock analysis and investment opportunities in the stock market so this is pretty much all for this video i'll see you in my next video